Hey, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Amy Howard. Welcome to our Wednesday at 3, learning all about the finishes and the processes that we can do with my sister company, A Maker Studio. If you don't know about A Maker Studio, it's a brand new, exciting company that empowers you, the maker, to be able to have your, your own business, to be able to learn about doing things like this, to be able to craft a beautiful life. So some of the things that we're gonna be going over today are actually using our stains and our Rescue Restore paint to be able to develop and create these incredible finishes that there again you can use on your furniture as well as accessories that you might rescue and restore or might be items in your home that you just wanna give a brand new look. So I'd like to be able to show you some of the things that we've been working on in our test kitchen because if you don't follow us on Instagram or Facebook, please do that now. Our Instagram has some beautiful images um, we have an incredible creative team here and Lisa Mack is our photographer and we, just so you know, yesterday was incredible. We felt like it was a home run. We got so many great photographs and processes and, and projects that we were working on. We're going to be sharing them with you in the next um, week or two on Instagram. So you want to make sure you follow us on that. One of the projects that we were working on, um, and this was the surface, of course you can think about having all different kinds of surfaces. This is a, um, an antique book that was not bound that I was able to take apart. And I used it as a surface to be able to use my ram head stencil. If you're, this is your first time about knowing about a maker studio, we have these incredible tri-mesh stencils that are a silk type material and see how you can see through them. It's not actually cut out, but it is a, um, like a silk screen material. So I was able to put this on top of here like this and you were able to see through it, I was able to use the chalk art through it to be able to get this look. Of course, I've come in here with the green mm -hmm. and I'm gonna finish it out and then actually frame this. So instead of using like watercolor paper or um, some type of foam cork that I would normally um, usually frame, I like using things like this. Now, come over here and I wanna show you just a couple of other projects. So this was a, um, a toolbox that I got for $5. And I loved how it looked really worn, and I thought, how fun would it be to be able to do some different projects with it? So I'm gonna show you this side. This is our gingham stencil um, that we just used our uh, red chalk art with it. But look what an adorable look. Can you see the details on the gingham? See how in here the cross hatching? You would never be able to get this look in this kind of detail with just a regular Mylar stencil. But the um, Maker Studio stencils are phenomenal for that. So the fun thing about it is, when you see the image of what we did on this um, with the flowers in it, it was absolutely adorable. Um, another project that we were working on, this is an old file cabinet, and you'll see the before and after, but look how adorable. We painted the entire front in Summer Nights, it's our Rescue Restore paint, and we came back with one of our um, tile designs and we laid it down on top of the summer nights and gilded it. We used some size and we gilded it in copper leaf. So what an adorable file cabinet now you've got it as a piece of furniture. And that was something that we rescued. So that's just giving you a little bit of the ideas of things that we work on here at the studio. And we're all about doing things out of the box. We don't want you to just paint the piece. We want you to think about taking it from the rescued state to something that really could be spectacular. So that's kind of what we're going to go over today is creating different finishes from our stains as well as our Rescue Restore paint. Now, if you're not familiar with our stains, I'm just going to show that to you really quick. It comes in a 16 ounce container like this, which will cover about 55 to 65 square feet. And look at the consistency of it. It is a gel stain material. If we had smell-o-vision, you could smell it, but you can't. But it has a beautiful citrusy fragrance to it. We use natural essential oils. It has no VOCs. So that way you can work in your kitchen or another room in your house. Make sure the floor is protected. And you can use these stains to be able to transform your oak kitchen cabinets to look like walnut. It comes in six different colors. It is water-based, but you can also use it on flooring, existing flooring. You do not have to sand or strip. You can go directly on top of it. It is a two-part process. So you apply with a brush and you take off with a brush. So we have another video on that on Facebook if you wanna watch that as far as how to be able to use our stains. We are the only water-based 
gel stain with no VOCs on the market. Most of them are oil based. So be sure and check us out. So let's glance this at these finishes real quick that we're going to go over today. Look at the depth of the first one. You're going to see that if you normally painted a piece in a blue color, it's going to be more opaque, very straight forward, but this has a lot of depth to it. It's because it's two colors, and I'm going to go over that with you in just a minute. The second one we're going to go over with you is two stains. The first stain that we, we this is the first stain that we used, and it's much lighter. The second stain that we used was the darker one that went on top, and um, let me see, this is hazel mahogany. This particular finish, which a lot of people love, 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 it's very worn, it looks very weathered, like you set it out for um, 20 or 30 years outside. This is done with the same stain with a hazel mahogany, but we did a wash on top of it with Blessed. This particular finish that you see was actually painted with our Rescue Restore paint first, and then we made a glaze with our Bella, um, Bella's blush, and put on top of it. And then this was painted with our Pick a Pepper Rescue paint, and then on top of it, we did a glaze with Bella's blush. So, when you're working on a piece of furniture, I want you to be thinking of all these different types of finishes. I call it more of a, a repertoire. When you learn and you experiment with a lot of different finishes, you're able to kind of pull from that. So when you look at a piece and you'll think, should I, not only just the color, but what finish? Should I glaze it? Should I maybe do it in a stain? Should I paint the top a different color and the base a different color? Should I take the drawers out, put in baskets, all that type thing. You start really looking at it in a different way. That's why a lot of people love rescuing and restoring furniture for a business or have Etsy accounts or it's their way of just kind of um, having as their craft their hobby because they enjoy the process. I'll be honest with you, I've been working on a piece. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to see, Danielle, would you bring that to me, what I've been working on earlier? So. Um, it, many of you may be watching and you're not a maker, you're not part of a maker studio and you don't sell our products line yet, but we do a Makers Monday um, where I teach the makers different techniques and things that we've been working on. And today um, I had one of our surfaces, thank you, and I was working on um, a kind of a painting technique just using some of our chalk art and a new product that we're going to be introducing that I'm not going to mention because then I might, might get in trouble. but. And just being able to show you how to create the variances of the depth here. This is going to be my background. Um, and then right down here, I'm going to use one of our lowercase alphabet stencils. And I'm just going to write, be still my soul. So I thought it allows you to be able to look at this. It looks very um, pastoral. It's very calming. But it's really just kind of a backdrop for the actual quote that I'm going to be putting on it. Um, and sayings because boards with sayings on them are so big right now. You could even be thinking about what I'm going to teach you today as far as the finishes. That could become a backdrop for maybe um, a surface that you're going to be doing. So I'm doing this on wood. You could very easily do this um, on di other different wood materials or plywood. You would not want to start with canvas because it's not going to give you the depth that this is, especially working with the stains. So the first finish I want to show you today is this one. So I want you to notice the depth. The part of the reason is that it started with the, um, the colored gathered. So let me open this for you. You see how it's that really beautiful pale gray. It's got just a little bit of blue in it, but I love this color. It goes with anything. This would be a great kitchen cabinet color too. Um, and you could also do your kitchen cabinets in this finish, in a glazed finish. It's awesome. You can use the Rescue Restore paint directly on top of cabinets that already have a finish on them. All you have to do is clean it with our furniture cleaner and you're ready to go. So I'm just, I've got a piece here that I want to, I want to paint because I want you to kind of see the whole process. So I'm going to load up my brush and it's as simple as painting it on just in long, clean strokes. We talk about so much about a lot of people, if you're painting furniture, most people don't use enough paint. So make sure you load it up without getting it on too, too thick. Always painting into a wet edge. I'm flipping my brush around all the time to make sure, and then coming back and 
finessing it out. So I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry because when I'm glazing, as a rule, I'm only gonna do one coat. It's not necessary to really do two coats because you're gonna come back on top of it with a glaze. You do wanna make sure that you've got fairly good coverage, that it's not too streaky. So in order to be able to get this look, I'm gonna take my Summer Nights and I'm gonna mix it with some water. So I'm gonna take this because the, uh, the Rescue Restore paint is going to take about probably 20 minutes to dry completely. And I'm gonna pour a little bit of that in here like this. Remember, it's water-based again. It has no VOCs, there's no odor. We actually put essential oils in it, so it's really nice to work with in your house. It contains no methanol, which most chalk-based paint companies do. And a lot of people will say that methanol is natural, but actually methanol comes in gasoline and it's highly toxic. Because I'm asthmatic, it, it definitely bothers me and you don't wanna have it to where you are sanding with it. So when we say that we have no methanol, that's a really big deal to us. The other thing is too, you don't have to seal this. So a lot of people know this already. If you Google the trends for 2019, that black matte finishes on everything is going to be very much the vogue. It's very difficult to get a, um, a matte finish with a lot of depth if it's not with a calcium carbonate based paint. And our paint is not an acrylic paint um, with just a flattening agent in it. Ours is a true calcium carbonate paint. So, um, all right, so I've made this glaze. Look at the consistency of it now. See how thin it is? So this is my glaze. I'm just gonna dip my brush in here and then I'm gonna cover my surface. Now when I'm working with the glaze, because this is fairly thin, make sure you're working on the top or the drawer or the sides. If you're working on the sides, you wanna make sure that you lay it down. So that way it's not dripping everywhere and you've got control over it. I'm gonna let it set for just a second. And then I'm gonna come back with a lint-free rag. It's really important uh, that you don't use a terry rag or a cheesecloth on this because the lint from the cheesecloth is actually gonna get in your surface. So you're gonna be patting it much like this. Can you see the texture in that already? Is that, is that able to show up on the camera? So you don't want to pull it like this because it's gonna kind of, it'll streak it. It's more of a strier. And this technique that I'm trying to show you, I think it's important to have it to where it's more glazing. So it's more of a hit drag motion. I want a little bit more to come through. I'll turn my rag and just kind of pat it, but I don't want it to look like it's ragged. I just want it to be soft. Now I'm working on pretty rough wood here. If I was working on another piece that I had painted, it would be a much smoother surface. But that way you can kind of see, this is already dried down. That's the depth that I'm going for in that finish that I absolutely adore. All right, so the next thing I wanna show you is this is a tone on tone um, kind of stain. One is actually darker, it's not, it's not monochromatic. But this is working with our two stains together. So of course, you can use our stains on concrete. So you could, if it's, um, whether it's concrete that's been sealed or it's concrete that you're gonna put this on, this will adhere to it. Please make sure that you clean it first with our furniture cleaner. Um, that way that's gonna give you a much better um, surface to work with. So we've come back right here. This is what I put on top. I'm not gonna do it again because I had to make sure that it was dry before we went live. So that way I can take you all the way through the process. But I put the antique pine on here, just one coat and it's completely dry. Remember, this is water-based, but you need to allow at least an hour or two for this to dry before you put the stain on top. If you don't allow it to dry sufficiently, um, when you actually come back to do this, you're gonna have two colors. Can the gel stains be used on old wood floors? Yes, the gel stains can be used on old wood floors. Would sanding be re required first? No, sanding is not required first. Here's, here's the game changer here, guys. With our gel stains, and with our Rescue Restore paint, let's say you have kitchen cabinets that are oak and you don't like them. You can come back on top of them, make sure you clean them with the furniture cleaner first. You can use 
our gel stains directly on top of that finish. Allow it to dry. If you want it darker, come back on top of it again. I would probably wait until the next day. Just make sure it's good and cured. Now, you do need to come back with our um, matte sealer and seal it. The Rescue Restore paint does not have to be sealed, but the stain does. If we, do we have a matte sealer? Can I just show them? So um, you wanna make sure that you put the matte sealer on top of it. And we have beautiful foam rollers at a maker studio. You can go online and look at one of uh, our maker's websites. And we have beautiful foam rollers with wooden handles um, that you can use to apply it. Um, we also have a four inch wedge brush that does a beautiful job of applying the stain as well as um, the matte sealer. So this is our matte sealer. You can order this online. Again, this will do about 55 to 65 square feet. So you can kind of figure that up depending on what size of your project is. This goes a long, long way. So, all right, so this is completely dry. Just make sure it has time to dry. I'm gonna come back with our club stencil. Now I could very well be doing the floor. I could put this on concrete. I could be doing this on top of a piece of furniture. And because there again, it has an adhesive back, I'm just gonna put some pressure to it. And we have these adorable little brushes called foam domes. And I'm gonna dip this into my gel stain like this. Make sure you offload it. You never want to go directly from the container onto your, uh, onto your stencil, making sure that it's pressed down. So I could be working on my floor. I could be working on the top of a piece of furniture or maybe the front of a piece of furniture. I could be doing this in stains instead of the paint. So the possibilities are endless. I personally love working with, um, with stains and paints, mixing them, finishes on furniture. Most of you don't know, but I was the furniture designer for, and we manufactured for Schumacher for 18 years. And I was all about developing beautiful on furniture. All right, so you'll notice I wasn't dragging it. I'm not using um, a regular paintbrush to brush it on. It's very important that you use this foam dome and that it's an up and down motion like this. That way it doesn't peek and get underneath your stencil. So now I'm gonna lift this up. I'm just gonna allow that to dry down. Looks a little bubbly right now, don't worry about it. I'm gonna let that dry down. And it's gonna look just like this. And then I'm gonna put the matte sealer on top of it. All right. So now let's go to the next finish. You see how easy these are? They're very straightforward. They're only too processed. And very easily done on a piece of furniture. So this is one of my favorites, I'll have to admit. This is what it starts out with. This is the finish. Remember the stain that we used is this darker one. And um, it's called Hazel Mahogany. Look at this color. I just want to open this up again. Isn't this yummy? It's, one, it's definitely one of my favorites. So we put this on this raw wood. It looked just like this. And then I'm gonna come back on top of it with a glaze. So let's mix up a glaze. There again, how do we do that? We're just gonna take the Rescue Restore paint and it's one part paint and one part water. a lot like cooking. You want to make sure that your consistency is nice. Can you remind them how they clean the stencils? Yes, the stencils, um, that's, a good, that's a good question. The stencils need to be cleaned with um, soap and water. A lot of times if I'm working with the chalk art, I'm only going to use water. Um, and you want to make sure that you like put, use it in the, put it in the sink. I'll use a natural seawool sponge or like a kitchen sponge. Nothing that's abrasive on it or you could just use a, um, a lint-free rag like this with some water and put it in the sink and clean it. Um, I would take you over to our sink, but our sink looks pretty dirty right now, so I don't think you want me to do that. But it, just let the water run over it, preferably cool water. And, um, and then I set it down and allow it to air dry. I don't wanna use 
lint covered products to be able to put on top of it like a paper towel keep it off the back of it because that's the one that's adhesive if those fibers get on the back of the stencil that's adhesive it will lose its adhesiveness so make sure you pat it on the front or lay it down um, on top of it backwards that way it can just um, air dry and then put it back in its package and it's ready to use again and again and again so all right so now I've got my glaze that I've mixed up. I made it a little too thin. I'm gonna add just a little bit more of this color, which is called Blessed. It's a beautiful kind of ivory white. Not too ivory, it's perfect. Thickens it up just a little bit. And I'm gonna take a clean brush, load this up. Now, I'm gonna brush this on from left to right because that's the grain of the wood. You need to be doing the same thing. When you're working on a piece of wood, make sure you work with the grain, not against it. And the other thing is, please make sure on this that your stain is completely dry. You need, even though this is a water-based stain, make sure that you allow about um, an hour to two hours for it to completely dry before you start putting glazes on here because if you don't, it's going to literally blend and make another color. So now, while this glaze is wet, now remember, when you're working on a piece of furniture, I usually work on the top, or I'll work on the sides, or I'll work on the front of the drawer, and then I want you to just pull it through, see how, my, with my rag, I'm just kind of pulling it through to where that will stay down in the grain. And you have to work fairly quickly. You don't want it to completely dry if it dries too much then you can't manipulate it like this. So the cool thing is by putting this blessed glaze on top of this um, stain, it makes it look like it's very weathered, like it's sat out for a long time. If you want to, you can come back on top of it and you can uh, dry brush maybe with some of the paint around the edges. But as this dries down, this is what it's going to look like once it's dry. Isn't that beautiful? Don't you love how that's down in the crevices like that? All right, so the next is fairly straightforward. These are identical as far as the technique. Um, they're actually using the same color, but they're just totally different uh, color bases. So this particular one just started out with the black Rescue Restore paint. And on top of it, I just did the same thing again. I made a glaze out of the Bella. And then here is Pick a Pepper with the Bella on top of it. So let me just show you. What I would love for you to start doing is experimenting, and I'll usually go to Restore and I'll get a cabinet door and uh, paint it and practice on it. You don't have to start with a piece of furniture that you're start, starting on. You can just go buy a door for about a uh, dollar, two dollars, buy several of them if you want to. And then that way you can experiment what your piece of furniture is gonna look like. All right, so I'm thinning that down with water. Remember, it's one part paint to one part water. You wanna make sure that you use one of our brushes. If you're working on a larger piece, you could roll it on if you wanted to. But when you get to this point, you wanna make sure that you work very quickly because you've thinned down this paint, it's gonna dry really quickly. So I might come back with my lint-free rag. Remember again, it's kind of a patting motion at first to kind of get the excess off, work your way down fairly quickly. And now I've got a little bit more control over it. I'll flip my rag around so that way it's not too wet. Now on this one, it's a little bit more of a striated effect. So I'm gonna very lightly just kind of pull it through like that. But you noticed I patted it first. And I wanna start pulling some of that dark black back through as it starts to pull and show through with that glazing. 
Now, a lot of times on this, people will say, well, can I wax it afterwards? Yes, absolutely you can. And sometimes it can add even that much more depth. But I also like things to stay like this, completely kind of dead, flat, matte look. So the other thing, the same way, I did the same thing on this one, but this is just Pick a Pepper. I used Bella's Blush, made the glaze, the same thing again, just like we did on the black. But it's just letting you see different glazes on top of different colors and what they can look like. I love the fact that we will make these notebooks that will be different examples of what different glazes will look like on different base colors. It's a lot of fun. How adorable would this be to be able to um, put a gold leaf band, maybe gild the hardware um, on top of it. I could come back on top of this with one of our stencils and do some chalk art in gold or silver or copper, that would be adorable. Um, let me just show you something too that I was working on yesterday. Um, this is um, an exciting new project that we're gonna be having available this summer. Um, and this is one of our home stencils. But look how I used a combination of our black chalk art. Um, first, I used the same stencil. I did, the, did it first in black, and then I came back on top of it with our gold metallic chalk art. Um, and I, I pulled the stencil aside just a little bit, so it's called off-registering um, when you're working on it. I'm going to grab my stencil real quick. I want you to see. This was actually the stencil that I used. So I was able to lay it down over the surface, and I was able to use my metallic chalk art on top of it. It was really simple and easy. It literally takes five minutes to be able to do it, but you have very expensive looking results. Um, and I'm gonna be sharing with you the technique on how to be able to get it cracked. But I thought it would be fun to just kind of show you real quickly how versatile our chalk art is. Now our chalk art is totally different from our Rescue Restore paints. This chalk art, sorry for my hands guys, you can see I'm working with it. This chalk art, um, is a patent pending, um, and it's actually a trademark to name, and as called chalk art. This is a removable chalk material that has calcium, calcium carbonate in it, but you can wipe it off. So that way, if you don't want to keep it, you can just clean it off, but it allows you to also be able to antique. We love creating these beautiful chalkboards or beautiful pieces of art. That's why I was showing you this earlier when this dries down. I'm gonna be able to come back on top of it with a stencil and to be able to have my wording. So this is just literally my backdrop um, for my, my board and my words that I'm going to be doing. So, but what I loved, I used the hazel mahogany stain. This is just a little piece of wood that I got from the craft store to be able to play with. And I put the um, hazel mahogany on it first. And then I did put, I just used a regular synthetic brush and I brushed on the chalk art completely, just one coat, and I allowed it to dry about 10 or 15 minutes. Now I wanna be able to show you something. I'm gonna take a natural seawall sponge. I'm gonna put some water in here. You always wanna make sure that you get a natural seawall sponge back in its natural state. Don't work with it hard, and I prefer to get it wet before I actually put it into paint. So squeeze that out like that. Now there again, this is my hazel mahogany stain, and then I just painted the chalk art on top of it. So watch this. I'm gonna be using a um, the seawall sponge. Look again how I'm doing this. See how it's kind of a hit drag motion? Hit drag, hit drag, hit drag. I'm not dragging it like this. I'm not brushing it. It's a hit drag motion to be able to pull through. It's pulling that paint off and it's allowing me to pull the stain. Can you get close enough to kind of see what that looks like? So that way when you see a lot of pieces of furniture and it looks like the paint has literally come off, that same technique that I'm gonna be able to get with this chalk art. I'm gonna to continue to work on this and I will tell you um, we have a whole line of pieces, There's, we call them surfaces, that are coming in from Italy. 
this week that we're going to be showing you how to be able to make into beautiful pieces of art. They're brand new. They're made from a wood pulp material, but we can stain them and we can age them. We can use the chalk art and our stains together and maybe a little gold leaf. And we'll have beautiful decorative accessories for our homes. So hopefully today, just seeing the versatility from doing our ram's head on our, um, on our old books that we can frame and turn that into a piece of art, to working with some of our wood surfaces um, and our gessos and our, um, and our stencils and uh, gold metallic arts and black, metal, uh, black chalk art, as well as the versatility of using our stains and the Rescue Restore Redecorate paint. It is endless. The possibilities are endless. So make sure if you're new, if you're not familiar with the Maker Studio, make sure you can go onto our website, type in your zip code and it will show you um, a maker in your area. Or you don't know, you may know someone that's on uh, as a friend on Facebook that may already be a part of a maker studio. They'll be more than happy to tell you all about it because you'll want to attend one of our gatherings so you will be able to do this project and enjoy the bragging rights yourself. So until next time, have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next Wednesday at 3 o'clock Central Standard Time. Bye.